out for dinner because uh, look at this. Everybody you see here works for the factory. And over there, you can see everybody standing. That's one of the bosses and a bossy. They go by every table to say uh, thank you and uh, give respect to each other. Back in the hotel, back in the chairs, time for a talk with beautiful yellow lights. <laughs> Last time, Yulin talked about the PCB shifting with his beautiful presentation on the whiteboard. And this week, we've made 50 new PCBs to test out and make sure that we don't have the same problem with the next mass production. We were really lucky that we were able to take a quick snoop into the manufacturer and see how the PCBs were made. And I was able to make some footage. I was very secluded from all these areas. I wasn't allowed to film everything, but I was able to shoot the most important parts of how these PCBs are made. And I think it's really cool. So Yulun, of course, in his 102 is going to explain how these PCBs are made. So please, yeah. Yulun, tell, yeah. tell me. <laughs> Sadly, we don't have a whiteboard right here in the hotel. Sadly, that would right. be pretty sick. I mean, we, we wanted to film it in the, the room where we normally do the testing. But one, there was a machine which was testing the keyboard. And there was a chicka 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 noise, which just ruined the whole footage. And uh, so we just have to do it right here. The PCB assembly is done in a, in a couple of steps. At first, you start with a bare bone PCB. And all the pads are on there. And all the holes are drilled, or whatever I talked about. And then it's time to place the components themselves. So what they do first is they apply a layer of, so of solder paste and then they put it on the assembly line and then it moves through the assembly line and then it goes into the machine which is the most fun machine to look at and it's called the pick and place machine. <laughs> and what it does is it picks up a component and places it on the PCB and you can just see those everywhere in the assembly lines. And I think this one has like five arms it's where you can see like five pieces at the so, same yeah. time. So it moves really fast and at the beginning there's also a little flash of light. And that flash of light is used to check the component if it's uh, the correct size. And then after all the parts are placed onto the PCB, then it moves further into the assembly line, and then it moves into the oven. And what's pretty interesting about the oven is that you can see on the display it consists of multiple steps. You can imagine that if you want to melt the solder and solder all the components in place, that things have to be very hot. And very hot can also be damaging to your components. So what they do is they first preheat uh, the PCB while it runs through the oven to about 150, 160 degrees. And then for, I think it's like 10 to 20 seconds, I don't know. I haven't sure. checked, but it's very short though. Yes, and then they, all of a sudden they just jump up the temperature to where all this, uh, the solar melts are about 270 to 80 degrees. And then they cool it down again. So all the joints are into place and the components are undamaged. And I think afterwards there's there is a visual inspection as well. Yeah, I have, wasn't able to record anything of the visual ins inspection. And I, I think for this production they did it with the bare eye, and uh, normally they have a machine which could just do a laser check, check and then check all the check the placement of the components. So you don't, what have we been testing the what have PCBs been for? First, we wanted to see if the issue we thought we had was fixed. Last time we ran into it, we ran into issues, and it's pretty hard to pinpoint the exact problem. You can you can think about what you think is wrong and then you can sort of make tests about and then you can make assumptions and tests and more assumptions and tests and just kind of see if your assumptions are true. But the only, th only way you can really find out if your whole theory works is to just make a bunch of them trial and error basically. Trial and error. Yes. Yeah. So that's why you made 50 pieces and I don't know how many we tested them today but it was a lot. I believe we got until 20 minutes. Yes. So we have one more day now in China. We fly back on Sunday. So tomorrow we're going to test the last pieces and uh, today and yesterday was also pretty slow because we we're sort of like still trying to figure out how to test. Yeah, and right now we have a pretty good rhythm and I think tomorrow we can uh, sort of blast through the last of them. Yeah. And we also have to do everything manually. Yeah. So we have, uh, I don't know, have we ever shown this machine on the block? Or the machine? It's not even a machine. machine. The meter? Uh, no. No, no, no. Wow. So. Which we've is kind of crazy <laughs> because we've been using it every day. It's an analog height meter. I don't know if there's a better word for it. And there's like, what you said, there is a, a big wheel here that you can turn. But it can measure the height uh, on a 0 0.01, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. it could. Yeah, yeah. 0 0.01 millimeter. Mm -hmm. That's very, 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 very small. Uh, it's impossible to see. And that's what it can measure. And that's what we measure every switch with. And we use it every day for every switch to test out the analog range and how the curve goes and everything. 
So it's quite an important tool. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. In this case, it's an analog device, meaning that not that it's <laughs> analog like our keyboard, but that it has. Well, that's analog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's analog as it uses mechanics, and it's not digital. Yeah, it's basically yeah. a dial which turns around. Yeah, and we'll be doing that tomorrow, and then Sunday is the last day. We'll be flying back to Taiwan, and we'll make another vlog vlog on Sunday to report what happened. Yeah, and sort of finalize this whole trip, yeah. I guess. And it's definitely not done yet when we're back in Taiwan. There's still a lot more to do, but uh, we opened up a whole new world that's going to help with the next mass production. Yeah. So there'll be another vlog, of course, that time. Yeah. But until so far, see you guys tomorrow.